Ladies and gentlemen, in front of me today I have two piles of genuine safeguarding letters. Now in both piles the safeguarding letters contain what on the face of it are spurious allegations of domestic abuse, the mudslinging allegations that all too often seem to be made by vengeful, hateful, emotionally challenged and irrationally anxious resident parents, who are mostly mothers, intended to throw the non-resident parent, the mostly fathers, under the family court bus to minimise, reduce, restrict and deny child contact. There is an interesting difference between these two piles of Kafkas safeguarding letters. On my left are those where the non-resident parent had good direct contact with their child at the time that the safeguarding letter was written. And on my right are those where contact was stopped by the resident parent and there was no direct contact at the time that the safeguarding letter was written. So, given that they all contain similar elements of mudslinging, domestic abuse and coercive control allegations, I was interested to explore in non-scientific terms if there were any differences in the recommendations within the Kafka safeguarding letters, being dependent on whether the non-resident parent had direct contact or not. Now, what I have found suggests a very interesting, if not shocking, pattern that may undermine the entire claim by Kafkas and the family court that the welfare of the child is paramount. But before I reveal all, you know what's coming next, I simply must run my excellent introduction. I am Philip Kedge, a retired police chief inspector, director of the Mackenzie Friend UK network and fearless family court vlogger. In all my vlogs, my views and opinions are, of course, entirely my own. Now, in this vlog, I am not in any way talking about the what I see as the 20% of cases where there is clear and abhorrent domestic abuse that we all reasonably understand and need safeguarding measures. I am referring to the vast majority of cases where there are mudslinging allegations of unfortunate and yes, regrettable incidents that I don't condone, but may happen in most relationships. So with that out of the way, let me start by quickly explaining the Kafka's safeguarding letter. And in doing so, I would strongly recommend that you also watch this feature. It's my vlog called The Kafka's Safeguarding Letter of Doom. After a parent, usually the father, applies to the family court for a child arrangements application, just before the first hearing, Kafkas will arrange what is known as a safeguarding phone call with each parent separately. In layperson terms, the purpose of the safeguarding call is to determine that the child is safe and well, being looked after by at least one parent, and any safeguarding issues with respect to alcohol, drug abuse, mental health, and allegations of domestic abuse, what the current contact situation is, and lastly, the general disputes between the parties stopping them from moving forward. After speaking to each parent, Kafkas will then prepare a safeguarding letter to the court, and that's for the first hearing dispute resolution appointment. The letter provides an overview of the current situation, the allegations and disputes, 
and provides recommendations to the court as to what should happen next. Both parents get a copy of the letter, usually a few days before the first hearing. Now, this is where things start to look a little strange, somewhat irrational and even perverse. Let's take a look. Starting with the pile of safeguarding letters on my left, where mudslinging allegations have been made by the resident parent, the mostly mothers, and the non-resident parent, the mostly fathers, already has positive contact, direct contact, even overnight stays. It seems predictable that the CAFCAS recommendations will conclude stating something like this. The mother has made allegations of domestic abuse and coercive control. However, as the father has current and consistent contact with the children, the court may consider that a fact finding under practice directions 12J may not be proportionate or necessary. A section seven report may assist in progressing matters. Let me bring up another type of example. Practice Direction 12J is relevant as there are disputed claims of significant abusive behaviour and a finding of fact should therefore be considered. However, I do not think that a fact-finding hearing will add anything to this case as there is ongoing contact and it is my view that the arrangements can be progressed between the parents without this. Now, what happens with the pile to my right, where similar mudslinging allegations based on hate and hurt feelings have been made, but this time the father doesn't have any direct contact. The contact was stopped before the application was made. Well, it appears increasingly predictable that CAFCAS in their safeguarding letter will say something like this. The mother has made allegations of domestic abuse and coercive control and has stopped child contact with the father. The court should consider whether a fact finding is needed under practice directions 12J. The court may benefit from directing the mother to complete a statement outlining her allegations of domestic abuse. Until issues of harm have been determined by the court, CAFCAS does not support direct contact as being safe at this time. Let's take another possible example where contact has already been stopped. The court to consider the allegations made by the mother under practice directions 12J. It may not be safe for the time being for the children to spend time with their father. Now, as a slight alternative, you may be lucky to receive something like this. In the interim, there should be indirect arrangements between the father and the children in terms of a video or telephone call once a week. Ladies and gentlemen, what the bloody hell appears to be going on? Could it be the case that the recommendations are actually very little to do with any allegations of abuse and safeguarding, but instead based more on whether the father already has contact or not? If true, that would be astonishing, potentially exposing the family court as one big sham in their claim that the welfare of the child is paramount. It seems to me that CAFCAS family court advisors are frequently applying this kind of totally perverse thinking and practice. Spurious allegations of abuse have been made but if the father has already got direct contact, then let's just move forward to a Section 7 report and a final hearing, as ongoing and extended litigation is harmful to the child. 
but where direct contact has already been stopped with similar spurious allegations, then recommending contact is not advisable and we need to consider fact findings to determine risks of harm under practice directions 12J. Now I can only conclude that the idea of safeguarding that the welfare of the child is paramount is nothing more than a game. It's a total load of bollocks. Because if it was paramount, then surely they would have more urgent concerns where allegations of abuse has been made when there is existing contact. Nothing makes logical sense. Perhaps the thinking of Kafkas is that the mother has made allegations of abuse, but as she is currently allowing contact, she isn't really that concerned about the abuse and the impact on child arrangements. Whatever the thinking of family court advisors, it simply doesn't add up. It appears that a significant determining factor or whether there needs to be considerations under practice directions 12J for a fact-finding hearing is not only based on the allegations of abuse, but on whether there is existing direct contact or not. I argue that there needs to be a fundamental rethink and the answer to me seems quite simple. Where contact has been stopped by the resident parent just before a court application, unless it clearly falls into an obvious threshold of significant abuse and harm, as may exist in perhaps 20% of cases, then there needs to be a strong determination to urgently restore that contact with the non-resident parent. It is simple and obvious for most people to understand that prolonging the restoration of contact between children and the mostly fathers is significantly harmful to children. Contact needs to be restored urgently by judges at the first hearing, with bolder, less risk-adverse recommendations by CAFCAS where contact has been stopped. As a holding position, even recommending contact in a contact centre or supported contact in the community as an interim contact order is far better than simply cutting and pasting that where there is no contact and spurious allegations of abuse are made that CAFCAS cannot recommend direct contact until those allegations have been fully considered, which can take months and months on end, by which time the relationship between the child and father is being destroyed in plain sight. But of course, how stupid am I to even suggest that? Because even if CAFCAS become more robust and less risk adverse, we are still faced with the broken, inept, incompetent and incomprehensible family court itself. And of course, judges from Planet Stupid, where at the first hearing, the judge has limited powers to force contact to progress without consent of the mother. All the mother has to say, as advised by their all too often sick in the head lawyers is, I don't support any direct contact until the allegations of abuse have been determined and there is very little that the court can then do. How mad is that? Once again, this all goes back to the point that I make over and over again, that the family court can be easily manipulated to throw the non-resident parent under the family court bus. Firstly, by stopping contact, and secondly, by throwing as many spurious allegations of abuse and coercive control over the entire period of the relationship that you can conjure up. 
It is almost guaranteed that the father will have contact minimised, reduced, restricted or entirely denied for months and months on end. Anyway, the point is well made. If I am correct with what I clearly see as predictable illogical patterns around recommendations within CAVCAS safeguarding letters, then the entire family court system can be shown to be fundamentally flawed to the extent of being one big farcical joke. Your route through the family court may be more dependent on whether you have contact or not, with the worst case scenario being no contact and then being thrown under the bus, with spurious allegations based on hate and hurt feelings. It's time to conclude and what I would like to do is to invite you to contact me today at contactphil.co.uk if you would like a one-to-one -one case review with myself or if you would like to find a McKenzie Friend for support from the brilliant McKenzie Friend UK network or if you would like to become a McKenzie Friend yourself. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Until next time, stay strong.